Hi guys and girls on YouTube and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at this Samsung TV that's actually clicking. Um, now I've had this this particular fault quite a few times on different models. Um, I've had it on a 32 inch, I've had it on a 40. Uh, this one is a 55 inch. This is a UE 55F. 6740 SB uh, but the fault can also um, throw up as a completely dead set so let's just have a quick look at this first and I'll show you the symptom right, so plug it in switch it on here uh, you'll see there's a relay there and hopefully you should be able to hear that clicking now also the backlight flashes briefly uh, but don't let that take you down the wrong path right so here I'm just going to unplug uh, the main board to the power supply and we'll plug it in again right so here we go uh, if we look at the backlights through these holes So I plugged it in there and you can see the backlight lights up. Uh, now it's probably not that obvious but if you look in there the backlight's actually flickering. Uh, that's another red herring so don't go down the path of thinking it's a fault with the backlights or the fault with the main board. What we need to do is check the voltage across here the main reservoir capacitor and make sure that the power factor correction circuit is running uh, if it's running we'll have about 390 to 400 volts across there um, if we've got much lower than 380 the PFC isn't running All right, so I've just clipped uh, a multimeter now across that um, reservoir capacitor let's plug it in again I'll just leave the main board disconnected so the set doesn't keep tripping out yeah, the back lights on and if you look at that, we've only got 333 volts, which is far too low. That means the power factor correction circuit is not running. Now, of course, there's no circuit diagrams for most of these boards. So what I've done is I've just drawn it really roughly. It's a lot more complicated than this, but this gives you a general idea. So we've got to look at the supply voltage pin to the power factor correction uh, chip. Now, I've looked up the data sheet and... The minimum voltage we need to start on pin 8 is 11. The nominal running voltage in, on pin 8 there should be 12 volt. Uh, so that's the PFC chip there. We're just going to take a reading here first and see what we've got. So I'm actually measuring across that little capacitor now. Uh, and we've only got 10.5. 25 volts or thereabouts uh, now bearing in mind to start the pfc operation we need a minimum of 11 um, so let's just mark um what did i say 10 point 10 point something on there i'll have to measure it again just give me a second right now just remember what i said about this only been a rough diagram but they do all follow a very very similar pattern so the supply for the pfc uh, it actually originates from the standby transformer, the one that supplies the 5 volt rail. And off an auxiliary winding, it's rectified, smoothed, and then it's applied to the collector of a transistor, which is just um, a series pass with a zener diode in the base. Um, and the idea of that is just to stabilise this voltage rail. Um, now, this transistor is turned on and off by an optocoupler, uh, which presumably... Uh, receives its on and off command from the main board uh, so what we want to do now is we want to take a voltage reading here and see what we've got there I think it should be about in the 20, 20 volts or something uh, and that is probably a I don't know a 13 volt zener to guess so let's just take a voltage reading there first right so bearing in mind that is the pfc chip we need to be moving right to the other side of the board uh, to here where the two opto couplers are and you'll see like a large transistor there that is the series pass transistor 
which is turned on and off by the opto which actually supplies the pfc um, so what we need to do is take the reading there now and i'll mark this on the diagram right so that's the test pros on i'm holding the camera at the same time we've got 18.75 volts there let's mark that right so the next port of call we need to know what's coming out of the emitter of that transistor there uh, now if that was a 13 volt diode 18 volts in we'd have approximately 12.2 12.3 there so let's measure that next right so actually a little bit more than what i thought coming out of the emitter we've got 15.10 volts but not to worry about that because you'll see where we're coming to in a minute so 15.10 will mark on the diagram right so on the emitter of that transistor we got 15.10 we've only got 10.2 volts there uh, and that's across that 10 ohm resistor um, so 15.10 less 10.2 that's a 4.9 volt drop across a 10 ohm resistor that cannot be right we need to locate this resistor and measure its value right so uh, let's have a look at that that there is the resistor in question little tiny pin head surface mount let's just make uh, a measurement of the resistance on that and there we go the 10 ohm resistor when you get it out of the light is actually measuring 239 ohms so that is the problem that resistor's risen in value uh, now of course it could it could have been a leaky capacitor it could have been uh, a short in the uh, chip pulling that voltage down across that resistor but in all of these sets i've done it's always been that small value resistor that's changed in value it's never been the capacitor or the chip even though it could be so let's just whip that transit that term um, let's just whip out that little resistor just there because of course it might be measuring different in circuit we'll take it out and solder two bits of wire to it right and i've just soldered two bits of the wire to the resistor there so we can measure with a meter hands free um, now i presume that capacitor was charged up because where we had 200 odd ohms measured in circuit before uh, now we've got a completely different reading so if you look at that the resistor is uh, 31.8 ohms uh, now what's unusual about this and this could lead you down the wrong path again uh, the resistor is mark 100 which would actually lead you to believe it's 100 ohm uh, but it's not because if you have a look on the board and you take some other resistors off mark 100 uh, you'll actually find that the 10 ohms so our 10 ohm resistor has risen to 31.8 ohms so let's get a replacement into there now right so that's the faulty resistor there uh, it's 1.6 mil long so that would put it in an 0603 case which is actually only 1 16th of a watt uh, now i'm gonna have a look at the board there's plenty of space to fit a bigger one um, if we have a look let's have a look where it's I've taken it out yeah i've taken it out from there so you see all that space there we've got to fit a bigger one um, which will never go again a more reliable one so what i'm going to do is i'm going to fit a quarter of a watt resistor um let's have a look in here yeah plenty in there let's get one of them out right so that's the resistor i'm going to be putting in uh, that's a quarter of a watt that was only a sixteenth of a watt hopefully this set will never have this same problem again with that bigger 10 ohm resistor fitted right so using my phone as a microscope let's just have a look i've put the old resistor on top uh, just to give you an idea of the size let's go oh, there we go so that's that's the new one put in there and that's the old one there I've taken out 
and you can see how much bigger uh, the replacement is to the one I've taken out so that and there's plenty of room get that back on again uh, there's plenty of room to actually fit um, that bigger one in there so hopefully that should not have the same problem again and um, I've just got to remember to take that off the board first and there we go so let's plug it in now without the rest of the set and just check the voltages and then we'll plug it to the rest of the set and try it right so let's clip the meter across the reservoir capacitor now and plug in and see what we've got and there we go 395 volts so that board is now working all right uh, let's just get it back into the set and try it so if you get a samsung tv in and the pfc is isn't working remember this rough diagram i've drawn up because that's all you need to find the fault um, now i once had a, a, a tv i think it was a 40 inch um, and they got no supply on the cathode of this rectifier um, which actually the it comes off an auxiliary winding on the 5 volt standby transformer uh, that's the standby transformer there that in this set that's the auxiliary winding um, and it comes out of that diode there and had a a 40 inch and there was no voltage there but the strange thing is the transformer was actually producing 5 volt um, standby supply but there was no output from the auxiliary winding and it was actually the transformer itself that was faulty I, I actually unwrapped it because I couldn't believe it, it could be faulty um, and there was a burn in the winding where it had melted um, but just remember this diagram um, because quite I've, I've had this quite a few times now where that particular resistor no matter what model it's in has risen in value and caused this exact fault so i've got the board in let's just turn the set around and we'll power it up right, here we go i've got the aerial in let's plug it in just take nice and there we go thin strips. You can of course buy the fish already filleted but there is something about filleting. Right so there we go that's your culprit. The little 10 ohm resistor there risen in value. All right guys and girls on YouTube many thanks for watching my video and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye.